So, Babs, the blockchain. Yes. Just a very simple explanation. What is an immutable ledger? I got a, the, the best uh, explanation I've heard of blockchain is it's uh, everything you don't understand about finance and everything you don't understand about computers combined. <laughs> right. So it's like a cluster something. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. Other. Now, An so, immutable ledger just means it can't be changed. It can't be changed. So a friend of mine told me that if you want to think about the perfect application of blockchain, you think about high-value, slow-moving items, like really big containers of stuff that have to get from somewhere to somewhere, or diamonds that have to get from somewhere to somewhere, and the provenance and ownership is important. Now, as I understand it, IBM has established like hundreds of use cases for blockchain yep. already. And so, and you mentioned one earlier about pork, which I thought was particularly fascinating. So yeah, no, do, <laughs> let's, let's talk pork. I knew pork. you'd like that pork one. Yeah, um, yeah so Walmart um, uh, is you know opening up uh, big box retailers in China, and the biggest revenue uh, source in China is pork. <coughs> Apparently the Chinese eat more pork than anyone in the world. Um, and they can't... Um, Helps when you start with 1.3 billion people. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. They probably have anyway. more of everything they <laughs> have in the world. Um, but um, basically, you've got uh, um, protocols in the U.S. that they, they have to make sure that they manage in China as well because they're a global brand. And, of course, if anyone gets sick in any one place, it'll affect their whole brand. So they, can't, they have to do things <coughs> in the same manner. So we built a blockchain for them that starts literally with the pig um, being bred all the way through to being packaged and... Uh, into the store to make sure it goes through all the protocols and it's um, you know managed in the supply chain in the same way that they would anywhere else. And we've now taken that and Walmart's now doing mangoes coming from uh, Central America and we've actually built a food safety network as well which multiple um, big food manufacturers including my old company Unilever is involved in as well. So is what, is what we're really talking about an adoption cycle that says that this is a supply chain issue and that the technology that sits on top of the blockchain will allow for that same management of faster and faster moving objects over time, and then you end up with something as fast and small as impressions in media. Is that the way it's going? If you think about that comparison to the internet in its early days, I mean, there's, there's, there was things that we all knew when the internet launched, and I was part of that kind of early um, uh, scenario as well at an internet company called agency.com in the 90s, and I recall well that we knew that you could do a ton of things in marketing uh, online, whether that's um, video, video ads, video content, all stuff, but no one had broadband. So, well, well, it's great we can do that, but just because you can do that doesn't mean you should because you know, no one will be able to see it and whatever, but in a few years we know it will, so let's prepare ourselves. So if you think about blockchain, it's a little bit like that. Like People think you know, if you have high volume transactions, you won't be able to do it on blockchain, it won't be able to capture it and still get the consensus mechanisms in place with the smart contracts, but the reality is it's moving very fast. There's a number, just like with the internet, there's a number of new companies coming in place that we use as what you were talking about, you know, application layers. So IBM builds the fundamental kind of enterprise solution for big companies uh, for blockchain use case. And there's a bunch of other companies that we sometimes partner with in the same way you might do a systems integration with any tech platform uh, to kind of help for specific use cases. So when we look at the ad tech landscape, through the prism of the Lunascape or yeah. whatever, but the general notion that there are now multiple stages in that chain and mm. multiple points of transaction, multiple points of ownership, how's that playing out specifically well, from IBM's point? So of that's view? what we're doing. So you know, so I um, I worked at Unilever in global marketing for a long time before I came here, and one of the big issues uh, that I was dealing with when I left uh, with Keith or Keith Weed, the CMO was this whole notion of these multiple uh, middle players in the supply chain, where it used to be client, agency, publisher, there was one measurement source, Nielsen for TV, uh, MRI for print or whatever. Now you've got client agencies, you know, 10 ad tech players, from servers to, um, you know, moat and, uh, you know, fraudulent uh, protectors and viewability, all this stuff in the middle, and SSPs and DSPs, and then you've got the publisher, and the publisher's getting 35 cents on the dollar. He used to get 85 cents on the dollar. So that's a problem for the publisher. They obviously would like more money out of that, but it's also a problem for the marketer because our working media isn't going as far. When I got to IBM, you get surrounded by technology in a way you never would at any kind of you know, any other kind of company, certainly not at a CPG company. I mean, unless you're like at Google or something. And uh, you really learn about it in much more detail. And when I uh, understood blockchain in much more depth, I was like, wow, this is built to solve exactly the kind of issues we used to face. Lack of transparency, multiple discrepancies, 
you know, just um, not understanding provenance. It was like a lot of things that I thought. So I called my old team, uh, my old my old guys at Unilever, and I said, "Listen, guys, I got this solution. I don't know if it'll work or not. Let's take a look." Did a discovery. We did a design thinking workshop in our blockchain garage where we really got to the uh, pain points throughout the process. We literally invited in like the the worker bees that actually work at the agency that do the buys in the programmatic space. And we all, you know, um, including at Mindshare and Unilever and whatever, probably learned more um, about that process just in there, not just about blockchain. We built a blueprint, uh, and then we built the MVP. We got some pretty good learnings, and um, what we were able to do, you know, multiple, the biggest thing I think we really wanted to solve for was discrepancies, because every single media buy is discrepant now because of all the different data sources. You know, they have, the agency has multiple people working full-time on doing nothing but solving discrepancies. And you know, there's money that's in some cases just never comes back to the marketer, and it's just the whole thing's inefficient and a mess. So, um, so this helped us solve that, and now we're, uh, we've got a, a really interesting potential solution that um, whoever as it can will probably um, hear about when I talk about it. Um, oh. That could potentially scale this um, a bit. 